Hi, welcome back to another edition of The Dreaming Tree Presents. This time we're starting at the beginning, we're going back to Live Tracks Volume 1. The very beginning. Yes. And so we're going to be doing that album tonight as well as a great bottle of wine, a Greek dry white wine. Yeah, we really know nothing about this wine. Um, the label just says it's from Santorini, um, from a winery called Gavilas Winery. Um, it's a 2010 bottle of wine. The label reads, um, this wine is produced from the noted Greek grape varieties. I do not know how to these words. Uh, yeah, some traditional Greek grapes. Traditional Greek but anyway, white grapes. Yeah, um, we love we love dry whites in general. Obviously, we love Sauvignon Blancs. So hopefully, this will be kind of up our alley. We love dry Rieslings as well. Um, so anyway, let's give it a shot. Uh, I'll do the honors. But anyway, uh, yeah. oh, there's another little stick. Ooh, I think you're supposed to like. like Okay, sorry about that, folks. Just some technical difficulties. Yeah, I think that was offline. All right, back on schedule here. Yeah, so this bottle was given to us by a lovely Greek friend named Elliot. Shout out to Elliot. We're really excited to try this. Just something different from the normal white wines we drink. And having some <laughs> technical difficulties here. Let's give this a shot. We need to put her down here. And this is a serious cork. It's a real cork. It's not one of those plastic craps, obviously. Working my wine. Well, I can't make any promises. Yeah. I think we're okay here. Anyhow. Alrighty. So, if I was a server at a restaurant, I would not get a good tip. Very, whoa, whoa, whoa very dark. Uh, Is this a port wine or? <laughs> okay. Someone's in the medical profession. This literally looks like apple juice. Tea. Let's call it that. Ooh, and the smell is interesting. It smells so sweet. It smells like wood or something. I don't know. You're not sure. Uh, <laughs> Look at the color. What in the world? Hmm. It's like a cider. Okay. okay. Very different. Um, very vinegary. Yeah, almost like an apple cider vinegar. Uh, yeah, kind of like drinking apple cider vinegar. Mm. Um, little pork. Okay. There's right. a cork in mine. A little bit of texture, but anyway. All right. <laughs> Not much to say about that. It's different. Yeah, try it out. You know, something different. Anyway, we're going to start right up here. First, we have Seek Up. Wow. Uh, this is the reason why people have license plates that say Seek Up. This freaking version of Seek Up. It is amazing. It is the definitive version of Seek Up. Uh, about 20 minutes long, which is, how, which is how long they do it nowadays. But Butch is on it. He is on fire for the whole freaking intro. It's got the wailing part. Shout out to Chester Copperbach. He's all about the whaling sea cups. It's not a true sea cup unless it's a whaling sea cup. Anyway, anything else to add? No, I mean, I just think overall this album has so much more um, depth when you're listening to each song just because you get Butcher on the Keys and you get Bella Fleck 
um, on the banjo slash mandolin. So yeah. this is a true old school album. It just this is so each song cool. you're gonna notice it's it's just full in its own way without the electric sound. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this seek up goes into a lovely Linus and Lucy, which would not be possible without um, the amazing Butch Taylor. So, um, very thankful to have the keys for this rare, um, rare little ditty that they do. Um, when was the last time they? They did Linus and Lucy. Mm -hmm. They actually do it on Live Tracks Two, which is a little bit later, I think. Uh, but other than that, I've not heard it since. Yeah, this is uh, uh, 1998. And yeah, Live Tracks 2 was like early 2000s, but since, I mean, obviously since, since they don't butch anymore, they literally can't do Linus and Lucy. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so this Linus and Lucy, it's, I mean, it, you get your classic, you know, peanut sound, and then it really just keeps going into a jam that I think towards the end starts to resemble more of like a Seek, seek Up outro. Um, I really just feel like it ties it just ties it all together. Um, it, it ties, because after Lines and Lucy, it goes into um, Pantala, Naga, Pampa, and Rapunzel, and I just feel like the whole transition from Seek Up, Linus, into that. Yeah. Um, it, it's all kind of one it, Yeah, system. it really, you can just hear, like, it's just really cohesive, and um, I don't know, I just, I really like how that how that works, kind of, because at, yeah. at some point, you just it keeps jamming so far on this Linus and Lucy that it just no longer is Linus and Lucy. It just becomes its own jam, and I yeah. almost think it's well, very reminiscent of a Seek Up outro. Yeah, but it's a transition. It's a it's yeah, a mesh. Yeah, no, it's a great. It's segue. a mesh it's between a, to, to, Seek Up to, to and Fatala, yeah. Fatala and Agapampa. It's like a beautiful. It's a beautiful combination, and it's and it's also a heartbeat intro as well. Like we have the heartbeat intro with listener supported. It's kind of different than that. Um, but it, it's just kind of a segue, like it's not really a song, it's just a segue between between Sika and Pantala. That's like but what it is. But, but it's cool. But it's, it's great. so long. Yeah. Like I mean it just it starts to like evolve and I just yeah. think it has no as direction. A listener, it just yeah, kind as of a wanders. listener you just yeah. kind of lose track of like, oh you're like, oh at some point you become like, oh, what am I listening to again? Like you just yeah. kind of don't realize that it's not the end of Seek Up. That's what I always think when I'm listening to the end of it. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Good stuff. All right, we're going to keep moving on here. Uh, we're going to talk about Jimmy thing next. Um, yeah, so Matt says that this is... This is one of the regrettable Jimmy things. It's not. It's very lackluster. lackluster. Not a lot happens. It's very slow, which is good. I'm not knocking it because it's slow, but it's very slow, uh, laid back. There's no outro. There's no... There's no um, you know, sexy MF or or, or um, the Buffalo Springfield stop. Look, you know, look what's going down. There's no, there's none of that. It's it's very subdued. It's very yeah, relaxed. Um, I just, but to me, this really stands out. If you just listen to the first few chords in the beginning, not it's not like it has like a crazy long intro. But if you do listen really carefully, um, just the honestly, just the slowness of it is like really refreshing. Um, Dave's playing on the downbeat, and you can really just get a, a fuller sound, in my opinion, because you are missing that electric sound. You can just hear his part a lot more. Um, it's just, it's a lot more separated. You can hear like every chord that he's playing, um, and then you're also getting a really cool sound that Butch adds. Um, you don't have the synthetic of an electric guitar, but you do have this cool synthetic sound that he's producing on his keyboard. Yeah. Um, which I think is like, it's just like an interesting sound. You hear it and you don't, I feel like you don't really hear that in any other Jimmy thing. So it's not like it's a crazy, like long or jammy Jimmy, yeah. but um, I just think it's just some interesting little um, tidbits in that Jimmy thing. Just, yeah. just taking away the fact that, you know, we, we, are, we do have some different instruments at play here. Yep. Yeah, I don't think this was with Tim either, so this is kind of that lovely, that awesome moment when they were kind of, you know, really getting to their groove with Bella Fleck and everyone and Butch and everyone, but it was kind of before Tim, so just an awesome time period for the band in general. But anyway, moving on to number 41. Yeah, so this is a really great, um, long number 41. Yeah, about 20 minutes. Um, there's another great number 41 that this really reminds me of. Um, it's on YouTube. We'll put a link down below. It's a 33-minute it's a 41. 
um, for when Dave played with Bella Fleck, the full bluff Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones in Canada. Uh, but it really reminds me of that version because it's got a lot of the same great riffs that Jeff Coffin does. Um, it's just, it's a great 41 in general because Jeff Coffin is on it and Bella, even though this was obviously way before Jeff Coffin started with the band, uh, Jeff Coffin and Leroy together, awesome combo. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to add other than that it's just, it's a great number 41, great jams. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's slow again, it's not too quick, but it does the classic riffs. Um, it's got the, Jeff does this classic riff, as you'll see, as we'll, we'll put down below. It's very similar to a lot of other 41s in this era, but awesome song. Anyway, um, there's only one other, one other song we're going to talk about in this album. Um, this is kind of the, 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 what we call in the wine world, the grand crew. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the best song that Dave ever does. It's not the, um, the craziest, the wildest, but... It is the most uh, memorable, obviously. Yeah. So, anyway, that one is Last Stop. Yeah, and so, um, this Last Stop, you can hear in the beginning this very like classical Spanish guitar type intro. Um, I guess it's Dave on the guitar, I really don't know. Yeah, we're not sure. Don't know. Um, it doesn't, it's just not, it doesn't sound to me like Dave's style, but I feel like we don't really get much of Dave's, um, we don't get much of Dave's guitar playing now that he has Tim, just because he always defers to Tim, um, for yeah. those more yeah. complex guitar solos, but this, well, whatever it is, I mean, it's a very, it's just a very classical sound. Plus he does um, do the 12 string on Blast Off. Yeah, so, um, but to get that sound, which is very, I mean, very different, I feel like you don't yeah. really... Well, what I will say this, this is almost a, a Don't Drink the Water style intro, because it's just, it's a lot of, it's like Don't Drink the Water Central Park style intro. It's a lot of random jamming, just a lot of riffs here and there, not a lot of um, uh, um, structure, not a lot of structure. It's just, it's very random, it's very unknown, there's no pattern, which, you know, we love. Um, you don't know where it's going. You don't know, you have no clue where it's going. Like, if you're a member in the crowd, you literally have no clue that they're going to play Last Stop next. Um, so, what else? Uh, amazing intro. Um, this is known in the Ants Marching Forum, and in, in general, this is known as the definitive version of Last Stop, and Last Stop is the definitive, definitive Dave song, obviously. Um, anyway, but, you know, it's one of the, one of the greatest albums before these crowded streets. Check it out. Um, but anyway, what else about it? Um, Bella Fleck also does an amazing job on this. He is touring this fall with Abigail Washburn. Check it out. Support live music. Check out Bella and, and Abigail. Um, but anyway, this was around Christmas time. So what we're going to get into is Bella during the outro jam, what we call the last stop reprise, as it's known in, in, in Before These Kind of Streets. Um, it actually comes after Spoon in Before These Kind of Streets. They actually replay the last stop reprise in the studio version of the album. But we're, what we're going to get into is during the outro of this song, Bella Fleck actually plays um, one of J.S. Bach's, Johann Sebastian Bach's, one of his songs, Jesu Joy of Man's Design, which I actually played in fifth grade with my teacher, a duet, uh, for the fifth grade talent show. Shout out to Miss Scott, if you're out there watching. Um, we actually played this song, and you know, it's it's a it's a classical piano song to be you know to be played, and it doesn't it has no relation to. Uh, you know, to rock music at all, obviously. But anyway, I was just listening to the song one day, and I and I heard this melody, and I was like, "What the heck is this melody?" At first, I thought it was "Ode to Joy," and I and I told Emily, I was like, "I think I hear "Ode to Joy" within this," and she was like, uh, "I don't know, I, you know, I don't, I'm not really hearing it." And I was like, "Okay, maybe it's not "Ode to Joy." It's something that I know. So finally, I, I kept listening and listening and listening, and finally, it came to me. This is this is Jesu Joy Mays Desiring. Is it Bella that does it, or? It's Bella that does it, yes, 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 Bella always, yes. Yep, it's Bella that does it. I know he does it frequently, I just didn't know, because since Butch was there, he did it on the piano. But. Yes, but it, yeah, it is Bella that does it on the banjo. It's always around Christmas time. Christmas time, you know, is the is the birth of, of Jesus Christ, and so Bella felt that it was it was necessary to play this little tune during Last Stop, which obviously Last Stop, like, which we talked about with Wrigley, Last Stop, is basically a symbol for the devil. However, Bella put this sort of, you know, this counter melody with it 
speaking of Jesus, you know, Jesus and Joy Man's Desiring, so it's just kind of a, a play on the words of that. Very significant. Anyway, around Ants Marching, the forms and everything, this is known as the definitive version of Last Stop. So it's one of my favorites. A great intro. Um, great overall main, main part of the song. Great, you know, just great chorus in general. Awesome outro. The outro is what makes it an ending also. Yeah, I mean, this is just a great live album. It's the first live track, so, um, you know, that's where Matt decided to start his live Dave collection. So, you know, if you're looking for a place to start, why not start at number one? So, yep, 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 yep. Lots of good highlights. Anyway, start, start at the beginning. Always a great place to start. Anyway, support live music, support great wine. We're out.